happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Yes, I did get a lot of sun yesterday. You can see my face is red. It was so beautiful yesterday. Now, we have a lot going on with our tropical update. We have multiple waves coming in. I'm going to give you the latest information. Plus, not only what we're dealing with with the Gulf now, I'm showing on GFS, Euro, and on the NASA satellite that later on that we're going to have another one coming up around the teens, the late teens, and the early 20s that this could happen a second time in the Gulf. So if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. I always stay on top of the tropics, and I will give you the latest information as well as the rainfall totals and what you can expect. All I ask is please share this information on social media or hit the like button if you're liking these tropical updates. Help inform others of what could be coming their way. Thank you so much. All right, starting in the Pacific, we still have Tropical Storm Darby, as expected to be Hurricane Darby, and it is on a path towards Hawaii, but weakening as it goes towards Hawaii. And you can see the path of it is expected to be a Cat 1 hurricane, but weakening down as a tropical storm as it gets a little closer towards Hawaii. And so far, the modeling is showing that they will all go north, way north, strengthening up, no threat towards Hawaii at all. And we do have the disturbance one, which is going to be coming from this first tropical wave out in the MDR. And it's going to come over here and form up. It's at a 40% chance within the next five days. But it is coming off the first tropical wave. And it is expected to form up and move along the coast of Mexico. No threat towards Mexico yet. So our first Atlantic tropical wave extends from 28 west to 17 north southward because it's still being suppressed by all this dust and it's moving west at 10 to 15 knots and that would put this right over here just coming off the coast of africa and our second wave is at 58 west 19 north and southward that puts this right here on the western side of the mdr moving towards the caribbean ural and the gfs is showing this is going to go around this bermuda high and travel a little further north and could affect the Gulf once again. And we have the Caribbean tropical wave from 77 west, and it's moving west at 10 to 15 knots. And that's the one that's gonna go into the Pacific and meet up with a disturbance one over there and form up in the Pacific. And what's in the Gulf of Mexico, National Hurricane Center is expecting an increase in wind speeds expected through the midweek as a low pressure develops over the Texas coast. So here's the whole look of it. We have a first wave that's going towards the Pacific, and this will help with that disturbance one area and form up later, as well as what's in the Gulf of Mexico. And we have that next wave over here by the Western MDR moving into the Caribbean, and we have what's coming off the coast of Africa. And you can already see in our Gulf of Mexico, 9.30, 10 o'clock this morning, they're already in the high 80s, and they will be getting into the 90s as well. So it is way warm in the Gulf for something to produce. And when you look at your potential velocity anomaly according to the Euro with our lift or sinking air, the Euro is showing that we have something going into our Caribbean sometime after the 16th, right around the 20th. So we do have a motion of lift coming through our Caribbean while we have this dust and something could form up at the last minute. And when you look at your chances just for a tropical depression, according to the Euro, you can see in 72 hours, three days, it starts building up for the Gulf of Mexico. Matter of fact, four and five days, it starts getting a little bit stronger where you have a chance up to 40% chance or a little bit higher, maybe 50 to be able to get a tropical depression right here. But if you notice, because this is going to be within the next few days, that you never see a trail going to the Gulf of Mexico because everything stays relatively weak because of the dust. But at the last minute, if the high pressure is not expanding out, the chances for a tropical depression sticks around for eight to nine days before moving off to the east, northeast. And that's because not only this first disturbance we're dealing with, I'm showing we're going to have a second disturbance that could add to that problem once again. Because as you look at your spaghetti o miles to see your possible cyclone locations, you can see in five days something does start up in the Gulf, and it has multiple directions it can go. It can go east, it can go west, Euro is taking it west, GFS is taking it east, and National Hurricane Center saying that a surface low could form along the Texas coast, going with what the Euro is saying. So not only these different scenarios as going with what's in the Gulf, it's showing that as we go into the 20s, that the Euro is showing as well that something could start forming up off that wave and start heading towards our Caribbean. Matter of fact, I'm showing that it could spin up somewhere around the Bahamas 
and get pushed to the west by the high pressure, and this could happen again. But as you look at your 500 millibar vorticity, according to the Euro first, then I'll show you the GFS. The Euro shows that it front induced low does form up and it does move more to the west than it does to the east like the GFS does show and this is by Wednesday. But as you keep following it, you see it kind of gets itself together, brings a lot of precipitation, but then you get this swirl right around the 14th that comes in from the Bahamas and is showing that on GFS as well. And it's actually that wave that gives the energy that it needs to help this form up stronger in the Gulf. This could be dancing around for quite some time and go towards Texas at that point, bring a lot of heavy rainfall, maybe some slight winds, still a little too early to be sure, but both models are showing that this is coming this way. Euro is showing that the energy will interact with this upper level low, this tropical wave that is in the Gulf, and it will strengthen it back up then move west. You can see as you go through, you start getting a surface low form up like National Hurricane Center right over Texas, right around Monday. But it sticks around for a little while, goes away. We have two high pressures of the cold front, Bermuda High right here, and it's squeezing all this precipitation still from the south to the east. But as you keep going, you see that we get this big high pressure. That's a plume of dust that we have coming through. But right behind it, it starts getting some energy, and that energy could help spark it right back up to another surface low right around the 16th and 17th and go towards Texas. And this is showing in multiple models, guys. So as far as precipitation, you can see how the cold front comes in. It starts twirling a lot of heavy rainfall for the Carolinas, but it's more severe for the Gulf Coast states. And it just swirls around, according to the Euro, bring a lot of heavy rainfall for a few days. Then when it gets that extra piece of energy, then it strengthens up and goes west and brings a lot of rainfall towards Louisiana, then curves west towards Texas. So we still don't know the direction of it yet. GFS is taking it where it goes when it goes towards Louisiana. It does go out to the east, northeast. Euro takes it where it gets pushed to the west. So here's your 500 millibar vorticity according to the GFS as the front induced low starts forming up that it goes in and out. It don't stay long, but it pushes west and all this moisture, all this precipitation keeps funneling out to the east, northeast, going around this high pressure, just bringing y'all a lot of rainfall. But as this next wave comes in around the 14th, just like Euro is seen as well, the second wave is going to give it the energy that it needs to form up something later. Now, GFS is showing the one later will go out towards the east, northeast, and then maybe a little bit towards the west. You see that little wobble? Euro is taking that wobble to the west. GFS is taking that wobble, staying in the south, and going to continue around this Bermuda High and get pulled out to the east, northeast. And this is what that looks like on the pressure. So as you see, it tries to get a surface low, pretty much the same area over Texas, just like the Euro is showing. It will be east side loaded with all precipitation because they're getting pulled in between these high pressures. So just because it goes over Texas don't mean Texas is going to be getting a lot of rainfall. It would be east of that system. But as it Pluma dust comes through. We get something possibly forming up in the Pacific from that tropical wave. Then that energy comes along and helps to produce it once again. Something could form up in the Gulf right around the 16th and 17th and have the same problem all over again. And that shows a lot different on the precipitation. So the Euro takes it towards Texas. GFS takes it where it just bottles up in the south for days. Then finally, when it gets that other piece of energy coming from that next tropical wave, then it finally gets a lot of precipitation, but still goes out to the east, northeast, with all that precipitation and all that rainfall. So there could be a lot of flooding, and according to the GFS, this could be in the deep south. According to the Euro, it could be in the south central. So the whole Gulf states need to be on alert, not only from what we're dealing with now. That next piece of energy is showing on both models, even the NASA satellite, that this is going to help contribute to a tropical wave later. And you can see this here on the NASA satellite. As you get that big plume of high pressure, that big plume of dust that is moving through, that right behind it, that it has a chance to form up a front-induced low. I think the energy comes from that second wave, and something could form up right on the edge of the Gulf of Mexico once again. And it's agreeing with the GFS that this would be more like a south to a southeast problem because we have this big high pressure of dust 
west of you, and that would be in Texas, and that would be blocking it from going west. So it would be going east, northeast, if that forms up. And that's what NASA satellite is seeing as well. And this is by the 17th. And you can see from the whole basin, all this dust that is moving through, still through the Caribbean. Just like I said last time, if anything forms up, it will form up close in the Gulf of Mexico. And it literally has to form up right in between all these high pressures of dust coming off the MDR right into our Caribbean. So the second plume of dust goes right around the Bermuda High, and that gives it the chance to form up, and it don't totally shove all this high pressure into the Gulf of Mexico, and gives it that little pocket that it needs to grow. And the update that came out this morning still shows what we have in the Gulf, but now it shows that it comes a little more towards Louisiana into our Gulf, and then goes towards Texas but it is still showing on multiple runs that we do have a second wave that will be coming into our Gulf of Mexico. NASA satellite showing it will still be some weak form at the last second. Euro and GFS both sees it, and both of them is taking it a little bit to the west. But remember, all these links are in the description, so you can go check out as you need them. The update with National Weather Service in the next three days, it will start adding up for the southern half of the Gulf states, as well as for South Carolina. As you go five days, as this sits there for the longest time and just spins around, it gets super heavy for the deep south. And as you go through the full seven days, it gets super heavy for the Carolinas and the southeast as well. But the worst of it so far is shown that the west bank of New Orleans is getting the worst. Anywhere from five to seven inches of rainfall. Southern Mississippi, southern Alabama as well, and the panhandle of Florida. A big hot spot of very heavy rainfall coming at least. So of course I have this link in the description for you for you zoomable into your area, see how much rainfall is expected because between GFS and Euro the next five days is not that much difference. But when you go the full 10 days and see what's going on with the track, you can see how the Euro takes it towards Houston. GFS takes it a little more towards the east. So I still don't know which direction is going to push. It all depends if this plume of high pressure is going to be blocking the western Gulf of Mexico, then the GFS is correct. If it's not going to be blocking the Gulf of Mexico and just come to the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico, it would push this to the west and make the Euro correct. Because this would be playing a big role with the winds as well. GFS takes the winds where it stays in the Gulf with the winds. The Euro takes it where it goes straight towards Texas and is bringing y'all 50 plus miles per hour wind gusts as this comes on land. And remember, this is after five days. This is from five to 10 days. So this will be a helping hand from that next tropical wave. I will keep you updated. Make sure you click the bell so you know when my videos do come out. And make sure you help share this information. Thank you so much to all of you. And today, Psalm 48. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge, for lo, the kings were assembled, they passed by together, they saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold upon them there, and pain, as of a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever. Selah. We have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Tell the towers thereof. Mark ye well her bulwarks, consider her palaces, that ye may tell it to the generation following. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even until death.
Amen. Have a great Sunday, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. God bless you and your family. In all power. All glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father, <laughs> our God, <laughs> forever and ever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>